Hey everyone, it's Andrew from Red Circle Pottery. I had done a piggy bank video quite a few years ago, and I haven't been happy with it. I wasn't really good at making videos back then. It's also like 35 minutes long. It's way longer than it really needs to be. So I thought I'd redo it. Um, some updated kind of visuals here. So hopefully a better video overall. And uh, so basically I'll walk you through the process. I'm also gonna do some more narration. Uh, I've been getting some feedback from different folks uh, who've been watching my videos and uh, seem to like the narration so I thought I'd make sure I'd kind of uh, give you guys a little bit more than I have been I've mostly just been doing intros at this point but uh, for the most part this is a really great beginner kind of project uh, or I should say at least if you're getting started on the wheel it's a pretty basic shape and design as far as a uh, kind of a squat vase and then you're just kind of doing a little bit of collaring on the ultimately what will be kind of his uh, snout or, or lip and then uh, you do a little hand building with adding some feet and some cute ears and some eyes and you're good to go so uh, what you'll see in this first part of the video is I'm throwing the basically the body. Uh, this is about three pounds of clay. It's a you know cert, you know it's a pretty good amount to work with. Uh, you're always accounting for shrinkage. So you know when I'm thinking about how much clay am I actually throwing, you know I, I want to throw it a little bit bigger than what I want the finished product to be. So uh, really here I'm just going to go ahead and throw a cylinder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that cylinder as tall as I can, and then from there then I can start to to belly it out and then. Uh, we're going to collar it in at some point here and then uh, we'll have a, a shape. So I probably don't need to do a whole lot of talking. I'm sure I could just ramble on for a bit, but I'll probably just uh, kind of pause here as far as uh, discussion. And then when I see some interesting points or things to point out, then I'll let you guys know. Um, one interesting thing that you'll notice coming up is there's a little bit of a wobble here. Uh, and you can fix these wobbles. Um, what happens is as you kind of uh, do a better job of throwing your pot and the imperfections in it will tend to kind of uh, be amplified the closer it is to the top because that's kind of where you're pulling all the imperfections to. It's just kind of how it works out through the clay. But what you'll end up seeing me do at some point is I'll start to trim the lip with a needle tool. And I'll do this a couple times. I think I cut most of that out uh, for the sake of, you know, just getting the video uh, to a reasonable amount of time. But, you know, when I when I start to collar in, when you collar in, it gets thicker in, in your clay, uh, which allows you to pull it up more. But eventually that all those imperfections will come out directly in the lip and then all i'm doing is cutting that lip to give it uh, a better profile and get rid of that wobbly clay because it's thicker and uh, denser on some sides than it is the others where those imperfections are so uh, it's a great way to learn how to clean up a pot so even though it's a really wonky or off pot uh, you can you can fix most of this stuff and that's true whether it's a vase a larger piece or you know really anything you're throwing there's almost always some sort of imperfection uh, and you can deal with cutting those things off now granted if it's a, a really really way off pot or something's going on you know sometimes you just need to scrap the whole thing but for the most part when it comes to you know collaring in and fixing the lips of your rims um, cutting it off is a pretty easy thing to do Yeah, and here you can see it's really bad. Uh, so yeah, all you gotta do is just kind of take that needle tool and just kind of park it in there. Be really consistent about, you know, or really have a steady hand. You know, you don't want to deviate because otherwise you'll just sort of tear into your pot. But if you just go straight in and uh, you're really firm and steady, then you'll just cut that away and it's pretty easy. And then you just fix, fix it a little bit with your throwing technique. Most of the shaping that I'm doing is being done with a rib so you know you're kind of you're doing some throwing you're doing some pulling you're doing some shaping uh, here i'm using the uh, cork so i want the opening slightly larger because again i'm counting for that shrinkage and i want that cork to be able to fit in there and have a little bit of room around the edges so that way when i go ahead and fire it as it shrinks then it'll have a nice snug fit when i put the cork in and again just doing a little bit more of that uh, rib work to kind of smooth it out and give it a nice kind of round rotund piggy bank like profile I really like using these stainless steel ribs that are really flexible they allow you to put like a really nice just kind of burnish or sheen to your pot so uh, they're really really handy to use I use them probably more than anything else 
when it comes to ribs. So I do use some wood ones from time to time, but that's more for profiling inwards where you need something more rigid. And then I'll use the flexible ones for the outside. So here I'm moving on, I'm using a Giffen grip to do the trimming and Giffen grips are really handy. You can get them for about 150 bucks probably, uh, maybe 120, 130, somewhere in there. Um, but they're really handy for taller pieces and you know bowls and whatnot. Uh, you can't put really, really large things like a 10 pound base. It makes it a little bit difficult, but for the most part, a lot of smaller stuff, it's, it makes it really handy just to kind of toss it in there, add a couple pieces of clay at the bottom to keep taller pieces from moving around or shifting and just kind of helps you with the center of gravity so they don't tip over. And so now all I'm doing here is I'm just taking away some of the clay to give it sort of a rounded back end. Cause again, gotta have that nice uh, piggy profile. And then because there's grog in the clay, uh, when you're trimming it away, it'll become pretty rough as sort of those little pieces of fine grog are sort of torn out. So I'll use a wet sponge here just to go ahead and wet it down and then I'll take a rib to smooth it and burnish and get that the siltier stuff to kind of fill in the gaps and uh, make it a nice, you know, smoother finished piece. And now it's time to put on the feet and the ears and the eyes. And so uh, pretty straightforward. I get some, you know, some balls of clay that I'm gonna turn into feet. And then there's a piece for a tail and a couple pieces for the ears. And you can make them whatever size you really want. You know, these are, uh, I wanna say between like 20 and 30 grams each. Uh, but you know, just weigh it out, see what you like and what works for you. And uh, pretty straightforward process. We're just gonna go ahead and, you know, start to make little barrels and then we're gonna score them and then we're gonna attach them. So here I'm just finding my placement. You know, I want the feet a little bit further apart and you know, so it's gonna rest pretty easily. Nothing nothing really special about this part. Just do a little scoring and then just wetting it down. And then uh, usually there's enough water there where I just need to kind of plop that on, twist and then it'll work the, the water out and then it'll be pretty well stuck. And then like most things where you're attaching, you're just gonna blend the edges so they are pretty well sealed on. And you're going to do this for all four feet. And someday I'm going to fix that brush. Uh, it's been like that for like a year or two. And uh, I know I should do something about it because it keeps falling off. And what I like to do here is just curve the feet a little bit because I want it to, you know, to, to rest the way it's going to stand up. Uh, so I'll just make sure that it's curved a little bit and then it flattens out the bottom of the feet and then uh, it'll just sit pretty nice. So with that part done, now we can move on to making the ears. Nope, I lied. We're going to make a tail. 
So here I'm just rolling it out so there's a bit of a taper to it because I want to curl it up. I like that little like pigtail curly cue. So, you know, it's thicker where it's going to attach and look a little bit more natural. So I roll it out just a little bit and add a nice little fine taper to it and then make it long enough that I can actually like curl it. Uh, you do want to do this when the piece is fairly wet or, you know, if it's starting to dry out too much when you go to do that twisting, it's a lot of torque on the clay and it'll actually start to crack. And that's, yeah, you can see it start to happen there. So I'm trying to just twist it without compromising the actual clay itself. And it's nice to always kind of like test fit where you're going to put things, make sure that they're visually pleasing or where you want it to actually be. And I think that's a pretty good looking tail. So we're kind of in the home stretch here. Now it's time to hopefully make the ears. And I like the big floppy pig ears. I think they're pretty fun way to do it and gives the uh gives a little piggy bank uh, quite a bit of character when they got those little floppy ears you can have one flopped over you know you can play around with it a little bit or have one twisted to the side um you know it helps give them a little bit of expression and uh, i've done different piggy banks different ways where one looks kind of surprised one looks kind of you know a little little maybe more sullen or you know just different expressions it's kind of fun to play around with and you do that mostly through the ears And now I'm just making sure that it doesn't look like it's whacked out with different size eyes. So just making sure that the balls of clay that I'm going to use for making the eyes are pretty consistent and same size. And there's where I noticed that they weren't quite quite the same size, so I added just a little bit of clay to it. And you know, this is another point to be made here that, you know, you can have a lot of imperfection in your clay. Like a lot of this stuff, there's probably like little dents or little cracks, or maybe not so much cracks, but like, uh, you know, imperfections. And there's just so much of that stuff that's covered up. So, you know, you, you can, fudge a lot of this stuff because so much of it's going to get covered up with glaze when you actually go to glaze and fire it. So you don't have to worry about having everything perfect. And it doesn't really take much to get these stuck on either. You just need to make sure they're just scored well, wetted, and then, you know, just a bit of sliding back and forth. will usually get them sort of stuck down, and that's usually enough attachment for them. I don't think I've ever had things fall off. Actually, I take that back. I did have an ear fall off a finished piece once, and that was a little disheartening because, you know, you can't really go back and fix a lot of those especially when they're like bone dry. 
problem with bone dry clay and you add water back to it, it slakes it back down. So it's not really, it's still clay, but it doesn't react the same way it needs to for things to kind of bond. So uh, that could be pretty challenging. And just adding a little bit of character to the eyes here where I just added like a little bead just to make it a little bit more eyeball like. And that is pretty much it. Just kind of put the finishing touches, just cleaning up uh, any of the clay around the edges and making sure, giving it a once over and make sure everything looks good. And now the last and final step is just uh, using a steady hand and cutting out the little coin slot. Here I'm just using a regular cutting tool, so I'm going to mark the very center, kind of just eyeballing it, and then I just mark to the left and right of it where I'm going to do the cuts. Uh, again, count for shrinkage. You know, you don't want to make this exactly the size it needs to be because uh, you want to account for shrinkage that when it gets smaller that you're still going to be able to fit a, a coin through there. And then just cleaning up those edges. Okay, now that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it's a lot of fun making these. I hope you guys have an opportunity to try this out. Like I said, I think it's a, a pretty easy project to get started with. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoy.